Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 735, written by Canes are Pain Daw. My aura controls the TV. My presence glitches out the TV. We don't have paid TV, cable, whatever, but we've always had an antenna, rabbit ears for local channels. But I was sitting with my husband just now and was thinking, I find myself switching it off during important sports events on the TV. Usually we just watch Netflix, etc. Naturally, because I totally F up the antenna and the incoming picture, it bugs me, garbles, and has bad connections, so I'm happy to step out because I know it must bug him too, and I just can't stand the skipping sounds and messy delayed picture. This has occurred in our previous house, moved in October, as well, with both a current antenna and another antenna we had previously, and now that I think about it more, it's always been an issue but just for me. Sometimes I'll be by myself wanting to check out a current news event, and I just can't because it's jumbled. But my husband will have no problem. He'll be watching a tennis match and then a race event this afternoon and I can hear it running no problem as I'm typing this. I just walked by for laundry and the TV instantly turned jumbled. I remember laughing about it in our previous house too and having to leave the room and stand a bit far back especially because the news cycles were running a major current event in my city and I just needed to watch. But I can't be close to the TV. Case notes for file 735. My aura controls the TV. So there's a few aspects to this. The first is, I do believe this is actually documented as a very rare occurrence. It's called streetlight interference phenomena. We all have an aura in terms of electromagnetic radiation. So it's conceivable if an antenna is just picking up radio signals that maybe you emit uh, some radio signals yourself. I don't think we're normally supposed to, but it's not inconceivable that we'd be able to. It's just a certain type of energy, a lower form of the EM spectrum, and we emit infrared all the time. So for some reason your body is producing radio waves, which would be my guess. If you get too close, you jumble up the signal, and then your husband can't watch good TV. How unfortunate. And sort of the basis of echoes or spirits interfering or messing with lights and electronics, it's all based on electromagnetism, which is sort of its own magical realm <laughs> if you really want to think about it. If you really want to twist your brain, then look up the double slit experiment, proving that photons and electrons, any atomic particle, is really just an excitation of a field. It can be both a particle as we think about it and a wave. It's trippy. And we don't yet have a solution to the observer problem, whereby if you observe the particle before it passes through either slit, uh, then it'll collapse the waveform. Now, it's not perception or human sentience that causes this, it's just any observation of it. To observe something, we have to forcibly interact with it, and that interaction collapses the waveform. The problem is, it still makes a choice before this, and we don't know how. It's almost like it's temporal. It knows what we're going to do before it does. It's sort of like, it's, it's making a choice ahead of time. It's very weird. You should look it up. Bonus file, written by Kitty JJ. She's still here. Back in May, I lost a friend. She took her own life. She planned the entire thing out for over a year and none of us had a clue. She didn't leave a note or anything hinting as to why. But through the actions she took on our final day, we realized just how thoroughly she had planned it out and just how much she no longer wanted to be here. It was honestly what everyone says. They were the life of the party, always happy, full of life, full of joy, full of love. And now we understand we missed the signs. I found out 10 days after her passing. Two days later, it was a Monday morning. I got into my car and turned it on. It instantly started playing Logic's 1-800 song. For those who don't know, this song is about suicide. I found it odd. My car normally picks a random song, but did it really have to be that song today? So I decided to let it continue on as I drove to work. The song ended and it began once more on replay. I don't play my music on replay, but I let it play again and it replayed for a third time. By this time I arrived at work, trying my hardest not to break down. 
About an hour went by and I got a message from my friend saying, Hey, today's the viewing. I left work early, went home to change into a white outfit. Her family asked for a white dress code, picked up white roses and with that we set off to see her one last time. It was a beautiful service, everything was pearly white. During the service, a bird flew into the church. It landed directly above her casket all the way in the front of the church. It sat there for about 5 minutes, facing the crowd. Then it flew to the back and landed directly above her boyfriend, where it remained for the rest of the service. A few days after her service, I had a dream of her. We were in a white room, sitting on a white bed. We talked for a while. It felt so peaceful, so warm. I know I asked her why she left and I know she told me why. But when I woke up, all I could remember was that we talked for a while and her beautiful, peaceful smile, but I couldn't remember anything about what was said. About a week later, I was having a rough day thinking of her. So when I left work, I asked her for a sign to let us know she was okay. I drove off, ran some errands and went home. When I parked, I sat there for a moment just thinking of her. Then I realized my music had stopped playing. I grabbed my phone and kept pressing the play button, but it would not play. Then I looked at the song itself, Life Goes On by Tupac. After I read it, it began to play instantly. After this, I began noticing the times, 1-11, 11-11, 10-11, 11-01, whenever I would have a rough day thinking of her. As I write this, I notice 11-01. One day, I was out with her boyfriend. He and I have been friends since kindergarten, and he's the reason we all met her. And he shouted, It's 1-11, I've been getting those a lot lately. And I looked at him in shock and said, You too? He's had even more strange experiences since her passing than I have. About a month ago, a friend of mine found three abandoned kittens. I picked them up because I normally shelter kittens until they're old enough to find homes. I showed her boyfriend a photo of the kittens and he suddenly had a shocked expression. Those two are the exact same color as the two she adopted before her passing. Monday of this week, I picked up a buddy of ours who had just returned from deployment. He was away for her passing and for her funeral. I filled him in on her last day and on the experiences after. He said he'd been ignoring any signs since her passing. He just wants to move on and they make it harder. As we talked, I looked at the clock and told him, What did I tell you? It was 11-11. As of yesterday, I began noticing more repeating numbers. Not just my usual repeating ones. Well, this is just a few of the experiences that have happened since her passing. I'm not sure how to take them or what they could mean exactly. And maybe some of you may have some insight. But ever since her passing, our whole friend group has been experiencing odd occurrences letting us know she watches over us. So about a month ago, my best friend's dad passed away from cancer. Understandably, she's been noticeably off since then. I had a heartfelt talk with her last night explaining just how hard things were for me when my best friend suddenly died in an accident on May 4th, 2021, and finding out our friend took her life the following day, May 5th. There are many obstacles we must overcome when losing a loved one, and it only gets harder after the funeral. I wish someone forewarned me, so I wanted to give her a heads up. My heart aches for her, the hell I endured and still continue to endure after losing my friends is what she is now enduring in losing her father. Today is her father's viewing and honestly, I'm afraid of going. I'm flashing back to the pain I felt last year going to my two friends' viewings. I got into my car and started playing some music while I drove to work. All I could think of was a viewing to come later today. My car got to a song and would not play it, so I decided to skip the song initially but went back to it to see if it would play. But again, it would not play. I looked at the title and read, Friends by J. Cole, and I remembered last year when I had the same experience of a song not playing after asking J for a sign. So I said, J, is that you? And Friends began to play. I almost lost it. She's still here. It's been months, but I still get signs. I still see repeating numbers a lot, every day at least three to four times a day. January of this year I was invited to Hard Summer. The ticket cost was about $230 total, 
and I normally don't like spending that much money in a day. So I sat there in the car contemplating on whether or not I should go. I looked at my dash and saw repeating sevens, so I checked the meaning and it said, reward yourself. So with that, I took it as a sign from Jay and bought my ticket. This music festival, Hard Summer, was this past weekend. Most of the time there I would be laying on some grass watching the sky and thinking of her. Why did she want me to come? What was the purpose of my being there? And as usual, I was seen repeating numbers. My last day there, Sunday, started off as a normal day. I saw my usual time, 10.10am, 11.11am and 3.33pm. I headed to the event, walked around for a bit and eventually laid down on the grass. I checked the time and it was 10.10pm. Again, I pondered on why she wanted me to come. What was the reason? I edited my photos for a while and checked the time again, it was 11.11pm. So I got up and walked to the final stage to see 21 Savage. During his set, each time I checked my phone, I got a repeating time, 11.22, 11.33, 11.44, and by this time, I asked her for one more sign. I couldn't believe how many she was sending consecutively, and the next one was 11.55 p.m. I stopped checking my phone for a while after this. I didn't want to cry. I proceeded to the grassy spot where I was laying down each day and waited for my friends. The next time I checked, it was 12.12 a.m. and again 12.22 a.m. A few minutes later, a guy walked by telling everyone, Drive home safe. Life is beautiful. Not sure if that was a sign, but it was nice to hear that second part. My friends and I left the event and walked over to our shuttle pickup spot. We sat down on some grass to wait for the driver. I checked my phone and it was 1.11 a.m. on August 1st. I was okay by this time. I didn't cry the whole event. I held it together pretty well, but I was still wondering why she wanted me to come. She's never sent this many matching numbers in one day. What was the reason? Then a girl walked by with a totem sign and it read, Look up at the sky, I'm still here. My heart felt like it dropped and I started bawling. She's still around. Case notes for the bonus file. She's still here. This is a heavy story indeed. It's good in a way. To know that she's still there, it'll lessen the blow. And you've had so much trauma and sadness to lose two friends and then also your other friend losing your father to cancer. Man, that's just brutal. And I hope tremendously that quantum immortality is true because if it is, they're still around. They're still, their sentience is still there, living in a different universe, disconnected from you, but at least still there. It's almost like the idea of the afterlife, but it's just continuing in this life. You don't get angels singing on harps, and I guess my heaven would be an endless buffet of food and the impossibility of getting fat. Just eat all day. <laughs> Chocolate cakes and pizzas and submarines and all that. That's heaven, indeed. I thought the bird was an interesting aspect to this. Perhaps somewhat drawn to the echo of your friend that lingers behind? It's a beautiful thought. I could see someone making a painting of that. This beautiful white dove just landing by your friend's casket, giving her a proper send-off, and perhaps a sign that part of her is still around. But like the previous story, the EM spectrum can be manipulated. So if we take that into account, this echo of your friend, if she wants to send a sign, well, what better way than to manipulate a song playing or not? Somehow she's figured out how to control if a song will play or a repeat or which song will come up next. Pretty brilliant. As soon as you read the song title by J. Cole, Friends, boom, it starts to play when it wasn't playing before. That's incredible. And honestly, I think that she is tethered to you, which is why she wanted you to go to the concert, because she wanted to experience the concert too. She probably isn't able to move far beyond you. So in a way, she's living vicariously through your life. So I think the best thing you can do for her is to live a great, exciting life. 